Disgusting and deadly underground graboids from Tremors movies explained in super detail. The sci-fi horror genre has a rich history courtesy of some classics over the years. Monster or weird, scary creatures have often been at the forefront of such movies, and there is one series that has maintained a tradition of impressive practical effects, entertaining storylines, and a decent cast. Yes, we are talking about the Tremors franchise that began with a 1990 sci-fi horror comedy of the same name. This Kevin Bacon and Fred Ward star became a favorite among the fans of Creature Features, and our curiosity was held by the gigantic killer worm-like monsters called Graboids. This was a masterpiece that was ranked highly in the list of B-horror flicks, and you could tell that the movie was made out of pure love for the genre. It had a unique combination of 1950s Atomic Age ideas with modern special effects. You could couldn't just dismiss this as a no-brainer because it had a tight script and some memorable characters played by talented actors. The creature effects are stunning as amalgamated dynamics, formed by Academy Award winners Alec Gillis and Tom Woodruff Jr. put together their best efforts. The titular beast has been fancied as one of the most dreaded creatures in the B-movie universe, and in this video we will tell you all there is to know about the Graboids. Before we go into our list, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click from you, but it means a lot to us. Thank you. Let's begin. The Tremors franchise so far and a quick review. Before we dive further into the Graboids, let us give you a quick recap of this popular franchise. Ever since the first movie, there have been five sequels and one prequel. All the Tremors sequels have been direct-to-video, but the quality has been rather consistent. They never stoop to the cynical, self-parodying nature like many other sci-fi franchises, and the fun B-movie tone is carefully retained. The series never tries too hard to unnecessarily complicate the universe of the Graboids even though they're the main appeal. They adopt a simple formula where they pick some wacky characters and put them in a complex situation where they must deal with the fury of the monsters. Over the years, the budget has shrunk considerably, but the special effects people have always managed to make do with whatever little they had. The Graboids were completely CGI in the two recent installments, but the quality of the digital effects has been quite advanced compared to the lackluster show in Tremors 3. One of the things that stands out for us in this series is all the intense action. The monstrous worm-like entity has traveled an entire life cycle in the course of the series. We saw them from larva to worm to the bipedal shrieker and ass blaster. Over the years, the Graboids and the Ass Blasters have been redesigned to some extent, but they never lost their charm courtesy of such practical effects as toppled buildings, destroyed cars, and worm guts exploding. The only thing that has probably changed in the course of the franchise is the increasing crass humor, but that has to do with the changing taste of the cable audiences as well. <sighs> So what keeps the charm alive without making the narrative monotonous? It's the constant contest that goes on between humans and Graboids. Every time the humans find a new strategy to survive their onslaught, they adapt to the conditions and find a way to outsmart them. We are then back to where it started and another new plan needs to be chalked out to trick the monsters. This makes it a serious cat and mouse game that is engaging for the viewer. There is one thing, however, that has remained constant over the years, the presence of Bert in all six movies. We aren't complaining because Michael Gross is a fine actor who continually retains the essence of this crazy guy. Such fun characters, the presence of a gigantic man-eating monster, and the intense drama have made Tremors the popular franchise that it is. What are Graboids and what is their origin? It's time to focus on the mean subterranean monster that is the primary antagonist in the Tremors movies. The Graboid is also referred to as the Dirt Monster, and this invertebrate species has been seen in every single flick. The creature designs were handled by Brent Maddock, S.S. Wilson, and Ron Underwood, and they did a fabulous job with this intimidating worm. From what we have learned, the Graboids originated much earlier than the events of the movie. In Tremors 5 Bloodlines, cave paintings of Graboids indicate their existence alongside the ancient cavemen. However, the makers were not too concerned to show us the true origin of the Graboids. In Tremors 2, evidence suggests that the Graboid spike dates back to the Precambrian era and points to an earthly origin. This is Precambrian rock. 
they probably coexisted with the dinosaurs, and over time they managed to evade extinction due to their extreme adaptability. These were simply gigantic, carnivorous worms that changed considerably after the destruction of the dinosaurs. We know that the Sierra Nevada region has continued to rise until recently, and that restricted the geographic location of some of the large predators. Maybe the same thing happened with the graboids who got stuck in the Wild West. Their food sources were limited, and only those that adapted to the changing conditions managed to survive. The mountains on all sides have probably restricted their movement, because although these monsters travel through dirt, they need a specific type of earth to move through. As we have observed in the movies, clay or other such compact forms of dirt make their movement difficult. We have seen a graboid perish while trying to break through concrete. He's dead. In the first movie, we were introduced to the American species, but there's also an African species that varies physiologically. The biological makeup of these monsters offers some crucial insights into their behavior and movements. There are four main genera of these graboids, and besides the African and American variants, there are also the Arctic ones that we saw in Tremors A Cold Day in Hell. These graboids can move through thin sheets of ice underneath the surface. In Tremors Shrieker Island, we witnessed other variants across the ocean and defy the initial belief of the scientists studying them. Standard Graboids, American Variant These subterranean threats look like gigantic worms with some significant physiological differences. They have long serpentine bodies and can grow up to be as long as 30 feet in length and 6 feet in width. From what we saw in Tremors 4, it takes the Graboid about three months to reach this size, and the thick-skinned creature is capable of withstanding bullets or other attacks. They probably have a semi-rigid structure, if not a proper skeleton, because the thick, muscular tissue is surely wrapped around something. Otherwise, it wouldn't have the necessary strength to move through the dirt and small rocks under the surface and break through hard surfaces to grab its prey. Besides, the graboid can lift up its upper body in the air, and that wouldn't be possible without some kind of semi-rigid internal structure. The shape of its jaws and upper torso help it propel through the ground and move at a decent speed as well. The internal structure, coupled with the muscles would help it to flex its entire body and move it in a corkscrew motion underground. They do not have eyes or a nose, and their large head is more of an armored beak. This beak face opens into a grotesque, flower-like structure where you will see an upper and thin lower jaw. The hooked mandibles are present on either side, and these are also pretty useful for navigation. Their most lethal weapons are their three serpent-like tentacles that have a massive reach of 10 feet. These are usually retracted in the graboid's throat, and initially, people mistook it to be the actual creature. This is why the characters of the first film did not realize the true threat initially. The tentacles have a mouth, teeth, and two pairs of horn-like projections on the jaws. They're not just useful in grabbing the prey, but can also help them in sensing vibrations on the ground. The sight of these tentacles or tongues hissing and writhing is unforgettable for those who have watched the movies. <laughs> The name Graboids couldn't have been any better because that is precisely what they do – grab their prey and suck it down their throat. The Graboids can quickly tell if the thing they consumed is edible, and the tentacles probably have a sensation of taste. If they find it inappropriate, they quickly spit it out. How they eat their prey varies from one movie to another. We have seen them both swallow their victims whole and dismember their prey depending on the film. Their metabolism is slow but extremely strong, considering that they don't really have to chew their food. Other graboids eat indigestible stuff like metal. Do they somehow retain the mineral resources from such types of consumptions? This hasn't really been clarified, but to see them up and running the very next moment, we have reason to believe that they do. Their thick, leathery hide offers them protection against regular bullets, and one would need something as strong as dynamite explosions or large bore rounds to do some damage. Shooting them in their jaws helps because they seem to be vulnerable when their tentacles are attacked. In the first movie, we saw guns intended for shooting elephants doing some damage. 
Their physical strength is extreme, and we have graboids topple over vehicles, trailers, and even houses at times. The short spikes present on their body helps them move through tough surfaces, and they have broken through brick walls and other strong structures. Their speed, however, varies depending on the quality of the surface. They can reach velocities of 15 to 20 miles per hour in loose soil but struggle to maintain such motion in tough soil. The graboids cannot outrun motorized vehicles, and even galloping horses have proven to be too fast for them. The distinctive orange blood is pretty unique, and although the first few movies did not highlight the stench, we saw that being a crucial aspect in Tremors 4. These powerful monsters do have a few weaknesses that can be exploited. For one, they cannot tell the environment they're traveling through, and often it is too late for recovery by the time they realize. This explains how one of them was tricked into running off of a cliff and falling to its death. Can you fly, you sucker? Can you fly? But how does the graboid breathe underneath the soil? From the looks of it, they have the same nitrogen-oxygen atmosphere as other animals, and from the way it has been heard expelling air, the creature probably has lungs as well. There's one more secret capability that helps the graboids survive without prey for long periods of time. We have already mentioned how these creatures do not necessarily enjoy an abundant supply of food in the wilderness. They can spend years in a dormant state where their metabolism is slowed down and consequently survive without food. But once they eat, they do need some time to rest and digest. We have seen a fully fed ass blaster collapsing into a food coma to digest and regain its strength. African Species this variant of graboids is seen in the Southern Hemisphere and Africa in general. They share a similar life cycle as their American counterparts, but we don't know for sure how they branched off from the American graboids. Maybe their ability to swim, as seen in one of the recent movies, came in handy. According to Bert, the constant character in the series, the African version is longer, slimmer, and probably better adapted to their surroundings. Instead of the semi-rigid structure of the American graboids, the African ones have a well-developed structure with skeletal that can fossilize. We haven't seen the Shrieker stage in the African variant, and this indicates that they could bypass this stage entirely. One of their unique features is the way their tentacles can detach from the host and pursue their prey on their own. In fact, when they're separated from the main body, they're a lot faster and can even climb rocky surfaces. At the same time, they're more vulnerable in this stage, and we have seen in Tremors 5 Bloodlines that their hunting pattern is a lot more aggressive. They were shown to be far more agile than the American graboids and could launch themselves out of the dirt to hunt their prey. Maybe the agility was a necessity to catch their targets which included the fast animals of Africa. Another crucial feature that made the African species deadlier is the fact that they could dig through rocks by releasing formic acid to soften them. They would then use their mandibles to eat through it, and rocks wouldn't be a restricting factor for these monsters anymore. In the first movie, we've seen the survivors trying to get on top of rocky surfaces to get away from the graboids, but clearly it wouldn't work in the case of the African ones. There's also a clear difference of priority between the American and African graboids. The African ones are keener to further their bloodline, while the American variant is all about hunting their prey. We have seen them cooperating with the ass blasters to protect their nests at all costs. There is a graboid called the Queen Bitch that was like the leader of the nest and worked to protect the African bloodline. Usually, the ass blasters and graboids ignore each other, and there have been instances where a graboid ate an ass blaster, but things changed when it came to the protection of their nest. Arctic Species this is another unique species of graboids that can be found in the Arctic regions. They have similar features as their American and African brothers, and just like their African counterparts, they have no shrieker stage. The multiple common traits hint at a possibility that these were the common ancestors or somehow related to the common ancestor of the other graboids. They can endure harsh, cold conditions, but there is a chance that the Arctic graboids did not start off by living under icy conditions. They probably got trapped and later adapted to the frost. We don't know if they had a skeletal structure like their African relatives did, but according to Bert, they could have been modified to serve as some kind of bioweapons. Given how old these creatures probably existed to, it is unlikely that there are many facts to support such speculation. Oceanic Species 
Tremor Shrieker Island showed Graboids that could easily cross oceans. The recent addition to the franchise tried to imply that this quality was part of their evolution, but this ability might indicate the presence of these creatures in different continents. Maybe it is an ancient capability that the American Graboids lack because their surroundings do not demand it. The Queen Graboid buries from one island to the next, but there's a lot of confusion surrounding the emergence of this ability. Bill was breeding Graboids in the islands, and it is possible that somehow that led to a new species with a special quality. However, evolution is a more plausible option than the breeding theory. We have seen in the previous movies of the series that water does not harm Graboids in any way. In fact, the Arctic Graboids can move through ice and water, and swimming doesn't seem like such an alien quality. We also don't know how deep these creatures could dive. However they manage to do so, it is certainly a unique quality that will be exciting to watch in future additions to the franchise. Life Cycle and Different Types of Graboids Explained You have probably heard a bit too much about Graboids without learning how their life cycle functions. For that, we must take you through their reproductive cycle and the changes from a Graboid to a Shrieker to an Ass Blaster to eggs that hatch into Graboids. It is more of a vicious rebirth, and we can begin with just about anything. Let us start with the Graboid eggs that are laid by the Ass Blasters. These eggs hatch into Dirt Dragons, which are basically the baby Graboids that you see in Tremors 4. They then grow into the standard Graboid that we have largely seen throughout the series, and this is actually the first stage of their life cycle. When the Graboid eats a considerably large quantity of food, it dies. The tentacles or the tongues, however, live on, and they transform into Shriekers. The birth of a Shrieker is characterized by the sides of the Graboid being blown out, and it leaves a gaping hole in the longworm-like body. Shriekers. These are asexual creatures that have just one goal, to make more of themselves. They need to consume a lot of food to reproduce, and then they open their mouth as much as possible, dropping a fetus on the ground. This causes them to screech loudly, hence drawing the name. They keep growing exponentially, and the repeated stress eventually leads to their death. The Shriekers are known to live on the surface, unlike the Graboids, and are way smaller than their subterranean counterparts. They are about 4 feet long and 3 feet tall, and look like miniature dinosaurs. Unlike the Graboids, who are solitary hunters, the Shriekers hunt in packs, and this helps them to bring down larger prey. They are one of the most dangerous forms due to being able to run on land, travel underground, and reproduce fast. This is the next and final stage in the life cycle and is probably the most bizarre. When the Shrieker gives birth, it is like a flying Shrieker that gained the power of flight by way of shaking its tail and backside. It seems to mix the liquids that cause a mini explosion through their rear and it can soar through the air. These creatures are also capable of running on foot and have great speeds to match up to their prey. They have sort of a sail-like structure on the sides of their bodies and this helps them glide smoothly. They even have a hint of a tail in their weird structure. The African Ass Blaster is stronger than their North American variant, as they are capable of ripping apart vehicles. Eventually, they eat a large quantity of food and lay a Graboid egg before dying. In Tremors 5, we saw around six Ass Blasters laying around a dozen eggs, which implies that they can conceive more than one egg. The cycle of terror goes on in a relentless circle. The Graboids can be opportunistic cannibals, and they can prey on the Ass Blaster as we saw in Tremors 3. However, the protection of the nest is the top priority priority, and during such times they form a symbiotic relationship for mutual benefits. Help! How smart are the creatures? You often come across monster flicks where the creature is dumb as a doorknob. While they might still be terrifying, outsmarting them becomes easier. The Graboids are ravenous carnivores with a knack for hunting, and they have developed quite a brain for that. They prey on everything from cattle, horses, sheep, and even humans, and for that they have developed various stratagems. These creatures are devoid of the senses of smell or sight because they do not have an eye or a nose, so their hunting tactic is restricted to picking off prey by tracking their seismic vibrations that are caused due to movement. The worms, however, cannot differentiate between the inedible and edible vibrations. As a result, 
result, they consume the thing first without inspecting and regurgitate stuff that does not taste good. These monsters are extremely sensitive to any kind of sound, and thus a loud bang from an intensity blast causes them a lot of pain. It becomes a sensory overload, and this is also the reason why they are unable to hunt during a thunderstorm. Their predatory techniques are mostly to strike suddenly. These are ambush predators that can sneak up on their target and take them by surprise. However, we see plenty of instances where they chase their victims with great determination over a considerable distance. The prey could climb on higher grounds or try to take shelter of a high structure, but the creature simply digs away the earth until the victim collapses. We have seen instances of their immense patience, which is one of their strongest hunting traits. When they are unable to locate a prey exactly, they circle around the suspected location. They can wait long enough for the victim to die of dehydration. If you have watched the first Tremor movie, you surely remember the moment when a man died of dehydration on top of an electric tower. We don't know much about their nervous system, but they seem to have a sophisticated brain that allows them to strategize in such detail. They have shown signs of intelligence, and more importantly, the Graboids can learn from their past memories. In the first Tremor movie, the survivors managed to kill a Graboid using dynamite. They drew it out by using the vibrations caused by the dynamite and timed it such that it exploded once it was swallowed. But when they tried doing it again, the second Graboid seemed to have learned from the trap. It simply regurgitated the dynamite before it could do any damage. There are many other examples that point to the intellect of these entities. Like when the people tried to get away on a bulldozer and it was too big to be toppled over, the Graboid simply dug up a trap in its path. Wait, wait, look out! Besides their hunting prowess, these creatures could also communicate with each other using a wide variety of noises that alerted others regarding a particular food source. The only way to survive an attack is to remain completely motionless. These monsters thrive on the vibrations created by our movements, and remaining still misleads them. However, it is important to choose the place correctly because you don't want to die of dehydration like the old man in the first movie. Future of the franchise, when is Tremors 8 going to release? Tremors has developed a cult following over the years, and it is no surprise that fans are awaiting further sequels. The last addition to this cult horror comedy series was Tremors Shrieker Island, and Michael Gross returned as the iconic Burt Gummer, the constant survivalist in the franchise. It released on the 20th of October 2020 and ended on a conclusive note. This time, Burt had to tackle genetically manipulated graboids called Shriekers, and speculations are rife regarding the possibility of adding to the storyline. However, there is some bad news for the loyal fans, as Shrieker Island ended with the shocking death of Burt Gummer. His self-sacrificial act saw him devoured by a gigantic graboid. He has been a part of the Tremors legacy for 30 long years, and his death marks the end of an era. So will there be a Tremors 8? There are both sides of the coin to consider here. For one, Universal Home Entertainment might feel that they have had enough with Tremors, and with their constant character gone, it might just signify the end. However, Michael Gross has stated that there is room for an eighth Tremors movie. That being said, currently there is no such news to validate the possibility of a movie or a reboot. Gross said in an interview that he would be welcome to the idea of a reboot if the stars of the original film Fred Ward and Kevin Bacon considered coming back on board. In case they did consider Tremors 8 seriously, the story would have to pick up from the events of Shrieker Island. We could have an exciting premise that could explore more about the reality of Burt's death. The resurrection of iconic characters takes place all the time, don't they? Gross has said that he would ensure his fitness to star in any sequel till 2022, and that does give us more than a year to wait and watch. While we keep our fingers crossed for Tremors 8, we sincerely hope that it lives up to the unforgettable experience that the franchise has offered so far. We would rather have no more movies in the series than have something terrible that would leave a bad memory. If you guys enjoyed this video, give us a like, subscribe, and press that bell icon that will help you get notifications. We upload an awesome video every day! Have an amazing day ahead and stay safe!